focus on healthy living. She's a two-time best-selling author of The Joyous Health and The Joyous Detox, and a World Gourmet Cookbook Award recipient. Her third book, The Joyous Cookbook, will be out December 31st of this year. And uh, she also has her own line of organic herbal teas and natural beauty products. You may recognize her from City Line and TTV's Your Morning. And she lives in Toronto with her husband and her beautiful daughter, Vienna, and is going to spread her knowledge on immunity to get us all through this winter cold and flu season. Welcome, Joy McCarthy. It's so beautiful. I actually, I'm staying in Kelowna, but when we drove here this evening, I was just like taking pictures um, from the car because you guys are so lucky to live here, which I'm sure you know is very beautiful. Um, so yes, I just want to tell you a little something. My third cookbook is coming out soon. I love food. Does anyone here like to eat? Does anyone here like food? Oh yeah. So I'm in good company. We're all in good company here. Um, so right now my third cookbook comes out later this year, but I actually have a pre-order bonus. So when you pre-order my cookbook, you get six recipes that you get to try out right away. So it's for food lovers, for health nets, uh, and for families as well. And one of my passions besides for eating is just um, taking foods and figuring out how to make them really, really tasty. So, you know, when I started my blog 10 years ago, um, I, you know, I had just graduated from school as a nutritionist and I was really, really green and so excited. Uh, and I have to say, some of the recipes I made back then were not always that good. Um, but now I've had many years of experience and many cookbooks um, later and I'm just so proud of uh, everything that we've created. It's extra special because my husband and I actually created my third cookbook together. He's a photographer, well, self-taught photographer. It's kind of funny because whenever we meet new people, he says, oh yeah, Joy and I work together. Um, I kind of run the business sides of things. And I'm like, yeah, you're a photographer, walker. That's what you do too. Um, and he's like so humble about it. And also we uh, just launched a podcast uh, in like May, I believe it was. So we have a podcast called the Joy Self Podcast. Uh, and we talk about everything from food to well-being, beauty, family, and entrepreneurship. Um, because we're obviously, my husband and I are entrepreneurs and we're always wanting to help other people uh, like us to uh, grow their business and have a thriving, successful business. So check that out. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's free to listen to. And uh, we've had so many amazing experts on. So tonight we're going to talk about how to avoid getting the sniffles. Um, and keep your immune system strong so that you can feel good all winter long. So I'm going to share with you some factors that lower your immune system. Um, I'm also going to share with you uh, some amazing, delicious superfoods uh, that you can eat to really enhance your immune system. We'll talk about some natural health supplements, all of which you can find here at Nature's Fair. And then, of course, some immune supportive lifestyle habits. Because as a holistic nutritionist, it's not just about what you eat. Uh, it's not just about your diet. So much of well-being is your lifestyle as well. So, you know, how you handle stress, um, how much sleep you get, um, how healthy your relationships are. All of these things make up your well-being. And so that's why whenever I do a talk, no matter what the topic is, I always talk about lifestyle because it is so important. And of course, supplements, I always like to say, um, supplements are supplemental to a healthy diet. So you can't out-supplement a bad diet. So I always recommend, of course, you know, we'll I'll talk about lots of, lots of good foods, but uh, nourishing foods is often as possible. So let's talk about what is the immune system. It is really complicated and intricate, but also really amazing. And when I was in school studying nutrition, we spent weeks actually just studying the immune system. So I'm not gonna bore you um, with too many details, uh, but I think you'll find all the information I share is, is well, hopefully you'll find it's very interesting. Uh, but I'll give you kind of like the top line. So your immune system is like this interactive network of organs and cells and proteins that are keeping your body healthy and preventing bad bacteria and fungus and parasites and pollution and carcinogens from harming your body. 
So it's working every second of every single day to neutralize things that could potentially cause harm to you. Uh, and your body has you know, many lines of defense. When you do come into contact with germs and other microbes, you take public transit. Of course, washing hands is always a good thing. Um, but your body has you know, many systems in place to protect you from getting sick. Uh, and it actually starts with um, the microbes that live on your skin. Now, when I was studying uh, nutrition about a decade ago, and we were learning about the immune system, we did not learn about microbes because it just wasn't in the text. You couldn't find this information as much as you can find it now. But the microbes that live on your skin are actually your body's like first line, very first line of defense. And um, per square centimeter of skin, you actually have a billion microbes. So by the time you leave tonight, you're going to take home some of your friend's microbes with you. <laughs> I love your face. Um, so yeah, which is pretty cool, right? And you know, I think oftentimes we think that microbes are bad. Actually, there's more good microbes and beneficial microbes than there are, there's more good than there are bad. Uh, and microbes were here first. They started the planet and they'll probably be here you know, after like long beyond, you know, once there's, well, hopefully there's never a point there's no humans. That sounded really <laughs> terrible. But you know, billions of years from now, um, it'll still be with the microbes. Do you know if you drill down seven kilometers down into the earth, there is still bacteria. Pretty cool. Bacteria are amazing. We would not be here today if it wasn't for bacteria. Okay, so um, the next line of defense is your skin. Then your mucous membranes, so think of your nose, even your little nose hairs, they are very important. Nose hairs are there to like collect debris. So you don't want to be plucking, you can trim them, okay, I'm okay with that, but no plucking of the nose hairs um, because they do keep you healthy, saliva. Uh, your whole digestive system, so your gastrointestinal system is very, very important uh, for a healthy immune system. And your whole GI tract is actually the largest barrier between you and the outside world. So it's a very important barrier you have in your gut that protects you um, from essentially getting sick. And I will talk about that in more detail um, in a moment. So beyond this, you have millions of different kinds of cells within your immune system, T cells, B cells, natural killer uh, cells, uh, macrophages, phagocytes, lymphocytes. There are so many different immune system cells that are working hard to uh, keep you healthy. So sometimes your immune system doesn't work so well. Has anyone, has that happened to them? Yes, have to solve this, right? Um, and don't beat yourself up if you get sick. We all get sick from time to time. The last time I did a speaking tour here, I got sick. It was really embarrassing. I completely lost my voice. So it wasn't even like I could, you know, it wasn't like I could just fake it and come up and I, I literally had no voice. So, that hasn't happened to me in a long time, fortunately, but it does happen to the best of us. Sometimes our immune system doesn't work so well. And how, how do you know if you have a healthy immune system or not? Well, signs of a weakened immune system are if you get sick a lot. And another thing is, if when you do get sick, you just feel like it's going on and on and on, or you get sick, you get better, and then a week later you get another sickness. That's kind of a sign that you uh, really need to do something to support your immune system. Um, and it should always be, as I mentioned earlier, a truly holistic approach to natural health supplements and lifestyle as well. Uh, food allergies and sensitivities, even asthma, are all signs of a weakened immune system. There's now a lot of research to show actually that um, children who are on antibiotics uh, before the age of six months are at a, gr a much, much greater risk of developing asthma by the age of three or four. And there's now a lot of research studies to show this. Um, same thing with eczema, by the way, um, antibiotics, and this impacts our microbiome. Those microbes that live in us and on us are um, greatly affected by antibiotics, and we now know um, that uh, our microbiome, when it gets you know taken out by antibiotics, this affects um, issues, health issues that we could be potentially at a greater risk for later in life. And I'll talk about that a little bit more too when I get into talking about gut health. And of course, autoimmune disease as well. So let's just talk about some factors that lower immunity. Any ideas? You guys want to just yell it out? Stress. Stress, yes. Sugar. Sugar, yes. Alcohol. Alcohol, yes. 
Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm not here. <laughs> you guys know it all. Um, but yes, all of those things I'm going to talk about now. Poor digestive health, um, overuse of antibiotics, stress, you mentioned, all of those things. All of these things up here and I will take you through. Oh, there's some sort of weird feedback. Yeah. Is it where I'm, I'm standing? I'm working on it. Okay, I'll just keep talking. Yeah. Okay, just tell me if you want me to stop. Um, inadequate protein intake. Can you guys hear me? Um, okay, let's go on to the next one. So, I know there's a lot of information up here. Don't worry, I'm going to kind of take you through it. I'll take this down as she's kind of... <laughs> I might switch your mic. Okay, uh, I can also talk really loud. Yeah. So, while you're fixing that, you know what, I'll just take it down and then you tell me when... Oh, or we can switch. Yeah. into contact with the largest amount and number of different molecules and organisms of any other organ in the entire body. Your gut is exposed to a lot of foreign invaders, molecules, because you're eating a lot of different foods. And you know what? Um, food is not sterile. You're consuming microbes all the time. And you know what? If you have a strong immune system, you're probably someone who never gets food poisoning, but you're probably actually sometimes eating bacteria that's not... Um, not desirable for your body. You know how sometimes you'll eat the same thing as someone else and one person will get food poisoning and the other person doesn't? That's because if you're the person who doesn't get sick, that's because of your immune system. Your immune system was able to identify that microbe uh, and destroy it, excrete it from the body. Um, hopefully, you know, more often than not, that's the case rather than that one person just got really unlucky even though you ate the same thing. Uh, so, the GI tract has to kind of figure out the difference between damaging molecules and pathogens uh, and the good stuff. So that barrier has to, it's like a really tough job. The barrier has to decide, it has to be permeable and impermeable. Um, it has to decide what nutrients, vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and essential fatty acids it should absorb and what molecules should stay out. So the barrier in your gut is everything. So incredibly important um, for your immune system. So that's why poor digestive health is definitely a sign of, is going to lead to a weakened immune system. Um, some of them have mentioned stress. Yes, stress is definitely uh, something that weakens your immune system. Does anyone ever find they'll have like a really stressful week? And then they've like booked a trip to Mexico or to Florida, and then they get there and they're sick for the whole time. I feel like so many people tell me that story, uh, and it's because stress. Because there's different stress hormones in the body, one of them being cortisol, and uh, cortisol suppresses the immune system. The immune system can't function as optimally when it is under a chronic straight state of stress. You know, acute stress is fine because the body regenerates and you feel better again soon, uh, but it's the chronic stress that's really the problem. It really does interfere with your immune system ability to function optimally, and there's lots of research to show this. Um, research on stressed people um, showing uh, how much colds and flus um, increased in a stressed out population. 
So lack of sleep, this is another one. A lot of studies show, um, one in particular um, that I was looking up showed that six hours or less of sleep makes people more prone to the cold and flu. And I can speak to this personally. Um, same with my husband Walker, whenever he doesn't get enough sleep is when he ends up getting sick. Does that describe anyone here? Do any of you guys find you get sick if you don't get enough sleep? Yeah, that's definitely my, um, my weak point for sure. Uh, but when you are sleeping, this is when inflammation is lowest, cortisol is lowest, uh, but when you are sleep deprived, inflammation chemicals are increased, your cortisol is gonna be higher as well, and this all of these things suppress different cells of the immune system that keep you healthy and can ward off uh, colds and flus. And then sugar, of course. Eating refined sugar, well, sugar feeds the bad bacteria. You know, you have trillions of bacteria that live in your gut. And uh, sugar is basically like Thanksgiving Day for the bad bacteria, the yeast, and the fungus. So that's why diet plays a huge role in the immune system as well. And uh, also, refined sugars can interfere with the absorption of vitamin C, and vitamin C, we know, is also uh, very important for a healthy immune system. And it's not just like white sugar I'm talking about, I'm also just talking about refined carbs as well, because you know carbohydrates that are very refined, like a box of cornflakes, have very little fiber, and so they break down in the gut very quickly, uh, because fiber obviously slows down digestion, uh, and so glucose rises in the bloodstream very quickly when you have quick absorption of those refined carbs. So sugar is not great for your immune system. Now it's more like if, if you have it like once in a while, sure, like you know if it's your, your friend's birthday and you have a piece of cake um, and your body is resilient and healthy, you're able to bounce back from having that sugar but it's you know, having it on the daily or every other day, eating something very intensely sweet is not ideal. Um, antibiotics, I think this is quite an obvious one. Um, they're, what do they do? Antibiotics kill bacteria, right? They're very effective at, at it, and antibiotics have saved lives. When antibiotics you know, were introduced decades ago, um, they were amazing. But the problem is nowadays we have, the World Health Organization has said, we actually have a global health crisis uh, because we have something called antibiotic resistance. And all that means is what's happening now is you might have an infection, your doctor gives you an antibiotic and it doesn't work uh, because the bacteria are getting smarter and stronger because they're adapting because so many people are taking antibiotics. So these bacteria are adapting so that um, they are resistant to the antibiotic. But the, but the problem with antibiotics really is they have such a negative effect on your um, gut microbiome, the microbes that live um, in your gut and uh, are in constant communication with your immune system. So there's a lot of research now that uh, is showing, especially antibiotics in early life, um, can put you at a much greater risk for things like acne, eczema, um, different types of inflammatory conditions as well, different condition, inflammatory conditions of the gut too. And we all know how we feel if we have to be on a course of antibiotics. You typically don't feel very well. That's why probiotics are super important um, if you do have to take antibiotics. Okay, so alcohol, um, which you guys already know, um, alcohol inhibits your macrophages. And those are, do you guys know the Pac-Man game? Do you remember that game? So Pac-Man like eats all the little um, niblets of food. Well, that's kind of what those cells are in your immune system. They like eat up the bad bacteria and those foreign invaders, that's their job. And drinking alcohol reduces their ability to function optimally. And of course, drinking alcohol every day is not great for the health of your liver because it's promoting nutritional deficiencies. Um, and the other thing is, remember I was saying the importance of the barrier in your gut? Well, drinking alcohol can really irritate that barrier and can weaken um, that barrier as well. So alcohol is really not ideal for the immune system. It lowers uh, the number of T cells in your body. Um, it impairs the function and the growth of B cells, which are really important for making antibodies, and antibodies fight infection. Uh, so it's not ideal. Now, if you have a glass of like red wine, I would say one glass a day I think is fine, but not fine for everybody. Um, you know, I, I barely drink at all. If I started drinking tonight and had a glass of wine tonight and for the rest of, you know, to the end of the weekend, it would not make me feel good. 
So I think the key thing is really just to listen to your own body. Um, but, you know, a lot of the research, what it shows is like having, you know, two to three glasses of wine one night will hamper your immune system uh, the next day. So just something to be aware of, especially during cold and flu season, especially during the holidays when everybody, you know, is indulging. So just to be wise about that. <clears throat> Inadequate protein intake. The most important thing I want you to remember about protein is that protein makes antibodies, and antibodies are what fight infection. And in animal studies, they found that you know 25% reduction in protein, for example, had a, sign had a significant difference um, in compromising the immune system. Uh, so not getting enough protein is uh, is not a good thing. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're eating animal protein or plant-based protein. I think the key is just to have a variety uh, and just to make sure at every meal and snack you have some form of protein. And we'll talk more, uh, we'll talk more about protein when uh, I talk about the different superfoods to eat. And then drinking enough water. I'd say that most people are dehydrated. And as you age, you actually lose the sensation for thirst. So you might be quite dehydrated and actually not even be aware of that. Um, but optimal hydration is really key for your immune cells to uh, work properly. And as well, uh, when we're not drinking enough water, this will concentrate toxins within the body, especially within the GI system, uh, and make it harder for your liver to detox and make it harder for your kidneys to um, function optimally as well. And uh, you have more lymphatic fluid in your body than you have blood. Uh, and you, your body needs water to produce lymph fluid. And lymph fluid is really important because it circulates the white blood cells throughout your body. Uh, and when you're dehydrated as well, the bronchi in your lungs um, are more susceptible to viruses and infections. And also your gastrointestinal lining can become vulnerable um, as well to bacteria and viruses when you're not hydrated. So what I always like to say is um, optimal hydration is when your pee is like a pale yellow. That's kind of like the best test. Unless you're taking like a B vitamin, then it makes it harder to tell, or a multivitamin, but um, yeah, so that's kind of the best way to tell because it's different for everybody. Of course, there's formulas based on your uh, weight, uh, but I don't ever use those. I, I think you just really have to like listen to your body and kind of pay attention to how your body's feeling. And then diet plays a huge role in the health of your immune system. And sadly, uh, most North Americans are not eating very well and they're not eating enough color and the color they are getting is from artificial colors, um, not natural colors. So 63% of North Americans' calories come from refined and processed foods. And you know what the other problem is? Uh, with North Americans is they're just not eating variety. They're like the main uh, fruit and vegetable that North Americans are eating is like oranges or tomatoes and white potato. That's it. Same thing with kids. Um, kids get 40% of their fruit and veggie intake uh, from white potato and fruit juice, which really is not, that's not a fruit. Um, so you can see that people are not getting a variety of different types of plant-based foods and eating uh, colorful foods is key. So I like to say avoid the sad diet, the standard American diet, and the crap diet. Avoid the sad crap diet. <laughs> crap stands for chemicals, refined carbs, alcohol, processed foods. So the key thing really is just to read your labels when you grocery shop. Does anyone read their ingredient labels? Amazing. So you guys are all doing that already. Good for you. Okay, so let's talk about some immune-supportive uh, superfoods. Does anyone here like mushrooms? Oh yeah, me too. Uh, does anyone here like mushroom soup? No, that lady at the back is like, oh, no, what is she talking about? <laughs> I used to hate mushrooms actually when I was a kid, and uh, I love them now. They're so good. But uh, we'll talk about mushrooms shortly. Kefir and uh, different types of ferment cultured foods are amazing for the immune system. Why? Because they're amazing for gut health. And your gut microbiome, so whether it's kefir, or organic yogurt, or sauerkraut, but kefir is definitely one of my favorites. I consider it to be a probiotic food. Also contains some B vitamins, and B vitamins are also very important for a healthy immune system. Um, but these, we know that the bacteria in our gut helps to modulate your immune system. So doing everything you can to support gut health is so key for a healthy immune system. 
Lemons, of course, are awesome. Does anyone like lemon and water or use lemon in a salad dressing? Yeah, lemons are a great source of vitamin C. They're pretty inexpensive. And I think this is just an easy habit to get into. Um, maybe when it's colder out like it is today, you can do you know, a hot mug of water and then put some fresh lemon in there. Maybe a little bit of raw honey. I actually don't have honey in my list of superfoods, but honey, raw honey is definitely um, an immune boosting superfood. So is propolis. You can get like the different propolis spray now. Bee pollen. All of the bee products are fantastic for your immune system. But uh, vitamin C is a natural antioxidant. Uh, the most abundant antioxidant. The most used up. Constantly, your body is constantly using up uh, vitamin C, and it has antiviral and antimicrobial properties. Mushrooms. Big fan of mushrooms here. Um, they've long been known uh, for centuries uh, for their medicinal qualities, and mushrooms are totally having a moment right now. Wouldn't you agree? Like, it's mushroom superfoods are everywhere. Um, so, <clears throat> I would suggest, you know, I think, it's, I think it's great that there are so many supplements with mushrooms in them, um, but also I would say don't forget to, like, eat the whole food too. Because the other thing is there's so many phytonutrients contained within a whole food that have benefits for your body. Um, but they contain beta-glucans, which have an immune stimulating effect because they actually enhance those Pac-Man cells, uh, which end your natural killer cells as well. And uh, they're very anti-inflammatory. They're uh, very rich in antioxidants, and antioxidants uh, fight free radicals. They neutralize free radicals in the body. So. Uh, whenever I share pictures of like recipes and stuff, that's almost always a recipe either from my blog. Yeah, sure. Yes and no. Um, it, it depends what the culinary purpose is. Like if you're eating it, then yeah, it's better to cook mushrooms. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, it depends how much you're cooking them. I mean, it's like broccoli, right? If you some of the phytonutrients in broccoli become actually more bioavailable when cooked, but if you're like boiling them for like five minutes, then, then not anymore. But it's like any like plant-based food. Um, if you're going to cook it, just like make sure that it's lightly cooked. But also too, like don't just stick to one kind of mushroom. Like some people will be like, yeah, I eat mushrooms, and they've been eating only white button mushrooms for the last 20 years. Um, so, you know, expand your horizons you know, get some dehydrated wild mushrooms and just add some hot water to them and uh, put them into a soup. Oh my gosh, so good. Um, I have this amazing soup, this wild mushroom soup is on my blog. The nice thing um, from a culinary perspective with mushrooms is that they get really nice and creamy once you cook them and then you blend them without adding any dairy whatsoever or any or non-dairy, like a rice muck. You don't even need to add that when you make mushroom soup. And uh, if you're adding some bone broth to that, you've got like a really potent um, immune boosting soup. But mushrooms are also really high in selenium. And selenium is a really important mineral for the immune system. Uh, I like to, cons I call selenium a very potent anti-cancer mineral. Uh, but I say getting it from a food source is best. Uh, it is, the concentration is very high in mushrooms of selenium and also in some types of nuts as well. And zinc, studies show that every single cell of the immune system is affected if zinc is low. That's why you see a lot of um, lozenges and stuff uh, with zinc. But I don't recommend supplementing with zinc unless you've been specifically advised by your health practitioner to do so. Because minerals like that can kind of, they can mess up and offset um, other minerals that are opposing to them that should be in balance. So just something to be cautious of. And then garlic, does anyone here like garlic? Me too. So I have a girlfriend, and you know what she does? I'm not suggesting anyone do this, but she swears by it, and she like never gets sick. She um, peels a little garlic clove, peels two of them, and sticks them inside her mouth on either side and up in her cheek, and then goes to sleep. Now, I don't think it's a good idea because she can choke, but they stay up there. And she has really bad breath in the morning, of course, obviously. Her better husband is not complaining. Uh, but yeah, isn't that the funniest thing? Uh, but you know what? I actually find um, that I crave garlic when I'm feeling a little under the weather. Does anyone else have that thing? Does anyone else crave garlic like me? I 100% do. Um, so one of my favorite ways to eat garlic is, well, in the summer when tomatoes are in season, I love just chopping up fresh tomatoes with some fresh basil, some fresh garlic, some sea salt. Oh my gosh, 
so delicious. <laughs> Uh, but ideally, you want to be eating garlic raw for its immune-boosting benefits because of a phytonutrient called allicin. Uh, it is considered garlic to be like nature's antibiotic. And it's really important um, to choose raw garlic. And when you chop garlic on your cutting board, let it sit for about 10 minutes because that allows that allicin to be activated by enzymes. So always wait about 10 minutes. And if you, you know, really want the benefits of garlic, you really shouldn't cook with it. But it doesn't mean you should never cook with garlic. Um, cook with garlic for the flavor, but just know if you really want to max out on those benefits, then it is ideal to have it raw. So I still use, I still like saute garlic and onions if I'm making a soup. Um, but if I really want to get the, the potent phytonutrient benefits from it, then I am going to eat it raw. And of course you can take garlic as a supplement too, uh, but garlic's great for everything. There's so much research on garlic. Uh, everything from you know helping to fight candida, which is a yeast in the body, um, to H. pylori, which is a bacteria that can cause stomach cancer, uh, and, really, and also heart health. Um, garlic is excellent for cardiovascular health. So garlic, awesome. Ginger, awesome too. Um, ginger is, Definitely one of my favorite, favorite superfoods, uh, particularly for things like a stomach flu and, or any inflammation in the gut because the, uh, there's phytonutrients called gingerols in ginger that literally diffuse inflammation within the gut. So ginger is very anti-inflammatory and you want to keep inflammation in check so that your immune system um, can work at optimal function. Uh, ginger also creates heat in the body, which is a good thing when you're sick. So don't be afraid of a fever too much. It's actually, when, it, when you get a fever, that is actually your metabolism has been stimulated and therefore your body is making white blood cells at a faster rate. So what I always say with a fever, trying to decide whether you should medicate or not, when it comes to yourself, um, obviously you wanna make sure there's no other, there's no serious underlying condition. And if you've ruled that out, I think it's good to let a fever take its course. Uh, because you will get better faster. Oh, are you okay? Your chair broke. Do you want to sit over here? So, you know, kind of like what, to medicate or not, it, I think it comes down to your comfort level. Same thing with kids. Like my daughter is definitely prone to fevers. She spikes super high fevers and then she's kind of over it. She can get over something in like a day and a half. Um, but if she's really uncomfortable, then I will give her something. But nine times out of ten, I don't. Um, and I just assess it. But I think a lot of times people are very afraid of a fever. So just something to keep in mind. But ginger, um, the reason I got on the tangent about fevers is that ginger helps to stimulate heat in the body. Turmeric, you know, most known for its anti-inflammatory effects. Um, curcumin, do you know curcumin? And Well, curcumin is a phytonutrient within turmeric, but turmeric is the most studied food in modern science. I think there's around 12 thousand studies on turmeric. Most of them are centered around this one phytonutrient, curcumin. But you, I, I could actually stand here and do a whole hour presentation on the benefits of this amazing superfood. Uh, but you know, research in the last sort of two decades has shown that um, it can modulate the activation of different cells of the immune system as well. Uh, so having uh, turmeric on a regular basis can really help to support a healthy immune system. Most people don't know that, well you guys probably don't know, but I get a lot, of, a lot of questions particularly like on my YouTube channel, they don't even, a lot of people don't realize that's what it actually looks like and it's a cousin of ginger, it's from the same family, and uh, it's actually spicy and sweet. And you can just take you know, a thumb size of ginger and put it in your smoothie. You could grate it into a stir fry. There's so many great ways. I love making this super easy ginger turmeric tea. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Uh, if you've never made a turmeric latte before, you're in for a real treat. It is actually really addictive. So you put some raw honey in there, some cinnamon, some ginger, some turmeric. I put a little bit of coconut butter, so I put this in my blender, and then I put in some hot water, and I blend it up, and it gets like frothy and creamy. It's the most delicious thing in the world. So that's what that uh, recipe is there. And then of course, eating protein. Um, I already alluded to this when I talked about factors that lower your immune system, but you need protein uh, in your diet to uh, build and repair tissues and to make hormones and enzymes. 
um, to make antibodies that fight infection. Um, glutamine is an, an amino acid that's very important, an amino acid found in proteins that you eat. And uh, glutamine is really important because it's actually fuel uh, for your immune cells. Uh, which is also very important. So what I suggest is, you know, at every meal and snack, just make sure you have either a plant-based or an animal-based animal, animal -based source of protein. That's a great choice because then you're getting both macronutrients. You're getting lots of good anti-inflammatory fats, um, plus you're getting a good source of protein as well. And then I also really like, sometimes it's hard to get protein in every meal and snack, so that's why I really like protein powder. Uh, and I like to do smoothies. I make smoothies and smoothie bowls um, for my whole family. Uh, and uh, I my favorite protein powder, I'm sure they have it here, is Genuine Health's Fermented Vegan Protein. And I love it because it is fermented, so it's helping to nourish the gut microbiome as well. And because it's fermented, it's so easy to digest, you do not get bloated at all. Uh, from it whatsoever. It's really smooth. It doesn't have that like earthy dirt taste that a lot of plant-based protein powders have. So that's just another option. Now I'm not saying that you know protein powder should replace eating whole food proteins uh, because it shouldn't, but it's just like a convenient option to have or having like a protein bar or something. Uh, and then finally, um, eating lots of colorful foods because North Americans are deficient in color. Uh, and phytonutrients are what gives foods their color, their taste, and their texture. Phyto means plant um, nutrients. So there are almost 25,000 known phytonutrients. And I'm not talking about vitamins or minerals or essential fatty acids. I'm talking about this whole other class of nutrients that are found in plant foods that have hundreds of benefits for our body and we're just not eating enough color, so we're not getting enough variety of phytonutrients. And we know we're not getting enough color because the stats show us this. You know, when 40% of kids' fruit and veggie intake is fruit juice and white potato, they're definitely not getting phytonutrients that really help to um, nourish their immune system. So what I would suggest to everyone here is to, you know, it's not about on a daily basis, have, have you had a rainbow of colors? Look at the week. Look at your diet over the course of the week. Same thing for those of you who have kids. Look at what they're eating over the course of the week because I get so many moms that reach out to me and they're like, oh my gosh, my, my kid just like won't eat anything healthy. And then I like do a little dig more digging. I'm like, well, like what's going on? Oh, the last two days they've just eaten, you know, pasta. And I, you know, always say, well, what is it like over the course of a seven day period? And that's, that's what's important. Um, is that throughout the course of the week, they're getting a variety of different colors. Same with grown-ups as well. But sometimes it can be hard to get colors. Um, so I also love, and I, I give the kid version of this to my daughter, but Genuine House uh, fermented organic gut superfoods. So it's truly a whole food supplement. Like when I open this, I put it in the fridge because it's 22 fermented organic superfoods. And what they, uh, what Genuine Health has done is they specifically selected superfoods from the full rainbow, but superfoods that are high in polyphenols. And polyphenols are a class of phytonutrients that act as prebiotics, and they feed the gut bacteria. So this is considered also like a prebiotic supplement. So this is why you know I often get questions: What is a prebiotic? What prebiotics should I be eating? And people are ferociously writing down every prebiotic. What I recommend to you guys is eat colorful foods. Eat colorful foods. Don't worry, you know, which on the list has the highest number of prebiotics. Because like things like onions and apples and Jerusalem artichokes. But there's so many benefits to other foods as well. But anyhow, so what I do with my daughter Vienna is I take a scoop of this and I mix it into like a bit of yogurt or applesauce or a smoothie, especially when I feel like she hasn't had enough fruits and vegetables. This is kind of like my backup plan, kind of like my insurance policy. Um, but we have it for adults as well. So that's a good segue of taking me into talking about supplements. Um, does anyone here take a probiotic? Okay, so most of you do. Let me just take a sip of water here. Probiotics are definitely my favorite supplement for a healthy immune system. So let's talk about them first. Oh, but before I talk about that, 
I want to know what you guys, aside from probiotics, what do you guys think about when you think about supplements for an immune system? Vitamin D. Vitamin D, yeah. Elderberry syrup. Yes, elderberry, so yummy. Those are all. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of people think of vitamin C, oil of oregano, zinc, echinacea, but oftentimes um, we take these when we start feeling sick, right? Um, but what I'd rather everyone do is treat the cause before the symptoms arise. So be doing things every day that help to support your immune system and prevent getting sick. So probiotics can definitely help you beat cold season. Um, they've been shown to reduce sick days. Uh, they've been shown to sh help shorten the duration of a cold, uh, which is really great. And there's a lot of good research on the different strains of probiotics um, for an immune system. Just some cool, fun facts. Um, this first one I know I've already mentioned that your gut microbes are in, and in your immune cells are in constant communications. They're like besties. Um, probiotics help to support your natural killer cells, which is your frontline immune defenders. Uh, one study found that taking oral probiotics can change the microbiome all the way up to the nasal cavity. And a healthy gut plays a critical role in developing a robust immune system. It's so important. And low levels in research, low levels of bifido and lactobacillus um, are associated with the development of allergies, eczema, and asthma in children. So children who don't have a diversity of microbes and are low in these type of microbes are at a much greater risk of these, uh, these types of um, health uh, problems with kids. So I always recommend a multi-strain probiotic and that's what the genuine, all the genuine health probiotics are a multi-strain. Because in research, uh, it's been shown that multi-strain, so that means there's more than one strain. Um, in research, multi-strains are more effective but, um, you know, the key is not just then two strains, like when I'm talking multiple strains, at least five, um, that mimic healthy gut flora because you have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 different strains. So it doesn't make sense to be like mega dosing with one strain all the time. It's much more effective uh, to take a superior formula that is um, a multi-strain. And so Genuine Health has like a full array of different types of probiotics. Uh, they have a 15 billion, which is a good one to start with. They have a 50 billion. They have one that is um, strains that are specifically selected for women's health. And they also have one for women who get UTIs, urinary tract infections. These are very helpful as well. And then I collaborated with Genuine Health. Uh, I partnered with them to bring you guys a kids line. So that's um, what's behind me here. There's some, oh no, where is it? It was behind me. Around the corner. Yeah. Oh, there it is, yes. So we have a kid probiotic. I'm so proud of this line. So we have a trio of supplements for kids. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have on those as well. But um, I can put this slide up at the end as well. This just kind of summarizes uh, comparing the different uh, probiotics. So you can see how many bacteria are in each and what is the form and uh, the recommended age as well. Uh, and they're from human origin, so that's a good thing. Uh, they are vegan, uh, they're free from any allergens whatsoever, they're bile and acid resistant, uh, and they're room temperature stable. You know, as a nutritionist, I used to think that a, any supplement, any, sorry, any probiotic that didn't go in the fridge was cheap, was not good quality, but that's actually not true because if it's in a blister pack, then it's temperature uh, stable, yeah, it's humidity stable because, um, Humidity changes are like the enemy of microbes. So it's just like for convenience, not having to put your probiotic in the fridge. I really like that, especially when I'm traveling. I always take it with me, with me when I travel. But just a little bit more about the kids' probiotic. So we have 5 billion live bacteria per yummy, chewable capsule. My daughter actually thinks these are candy. I keep trying to tell her no, but every day she, she does ask for her probiotic, but I think in her mind she thinks it's a candy, just by the sheer number of times um, she asks me, and she tries to trick me sometimes too. Like I'll give her a probiotic in the morning, and then before she goes to school, she'll be like, oh, I, have, I haven't had my probiotic, mommy, can I have my probiotic? I'm like, you already had your probiotic. Um, but uh, we, so this probiotic has seven balanced strains to support a child's gut health. And every single strain that we chose for this probiotic, we chose it because it's based on research uh, for childhood health. Um, 
in a variety of areas, um, from reducing upper respiratory infections to uh, preventing bouts of diarrhea. Uh, so, and this came out in May, and I've heard from so many families who just reach out to me on Instagram telling me how much it's helped their kids, uh, and how when they do get sick, they're not sick for as long. Um, and they are feeling better um, at a much, they're feeling better much faster. I'm not going to go through all this. I just wanted to show you some of the strains like L. Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG is one of the strains in the kids' probiotic. And it's among the most researched probiotic for promoting childhood health, uh, immune support, and healthy development. So really important for kids. And it's a chewable, so three plus. But actually for th age three years and older, uh, we have to say that because of Health Canada, of course, but as a mom, my daughter would have totally been able to chew it before three. Just depends, like, how many teeth your kid has and, you know, how confident you are as a parent um, that they can chew it up. And then vitamin D. So I think you mentioned vitamin D as being a great, uh, really, really great vitamin for a healthy immune system, but vitamin D is actually not a vitamin at all. It's actually a hormone. It actually acts as a hormone in the body. It's just never been renamed. Um, but vitamin D helps the body identify and destroy bacteria and viruses. It helps to prevent upper respiratory infections as well. Um, it strengthens the barrier of the skin. Side note, really good for people who are eczema prone as well. Or if you just have other, if you have dry skin, dry cracked heels uh, is a sign of a deficiency of, mag of, of sorry, not magnesium, of vitamin D. Uh, and it, vitamin D turns on key peptides in the immune system. Uh, to trigger a stronger antimicrobial response. So vitamin D is really great, and there's lots of good research on it as well. It uh, regulates the expression of over 2,000 genes, and many of those uh, in the immune system too. But here's the thing. Most people in North America are deficient in vitamin D. Some experts say up to 90% of people are deficient. So... Uh, you know, it's a good idea. You can get it checked by your doctor. Of course, you have to pay for it. Um, it's not free. I don't know how much it costs in BC. Is it all? Okay, six. Yeah, it's expensive here in Ontario, where I'm from. It's thirty-six dollars, unless it's gone up in price. But I think it's a good idea to get tested because then you know where you're at and you have a better sense of, uh, you know, should you just take the baseline, a thousand IU's per day, or not? Are you low? Then maybe you can take a little bit more. Omega-3s, this one might surprise you, but omega-3s are very, very important for the immune system. Um, they're very, very important at keeping inflammation in check. Um, they're like the fire hose uh, for calming inflammation, uh, but particularly for autoimmune diseases. So in an autoimmune disease, your immune system mistakes healthy cells for foreign cells and attacks them. And so omega-3s um, can really help, uh, for example, type 1 diabetes, um, and many different diseases actually, and a, and a lack of uh, omega-3s early in life uh, can actually lead to um, diseases in childhood and diseases later in life that are inflammatory based as well. So omega-3s are really, really important um, for, for brain health too. And also you want to think that, you know, children have rapid brain development. By the time they're like four or five, they actually have pretty much like an adult-sized brain. And your brain is literally made of good fats, especially DHA. So it's really, really important, especially for children um, and as, as an aging person as well, to make sure that you are getting enough omega-3s. And most children are actually, the research shows that children are more deficient in omega-3s than adults are. Uh, so, uh, and they also, from an immune system perspective, animal studies have shown that omega-3s boost the activity in your B cells, um, which is a vital part of the body's immune system as well. And then general health, of course, has different types of fish oils. Now, this one in particular, I just wanted to show you, even though it doesn't say for a healthy immune system on here, um, it is formulated, uh, the, the, the dosage that is in there is formulated, it's called Joy. No, it's not actually named after me. I came along after this was brought out by Genuine Health, but I always get that question. Um, but it, the dosage is clinically proven to help with mood uh, and a healthy mental outlook, uh, including preventing seasonal blues. So that's why I really like talking about this one, particularly in cold and flu season, when a lot of people experience winter blues as well, because they're you know not getting 
um, your lifestyle changes in the winter, you're not getting outside as much. But this is a really great omega-3 from small fish. And of course, we have the children's omega-3 as well. Uh, and funny story, uh, I, this is, <laughs> I actually take this one because I give it to my daughter too. So we just take it together. It is so delicious. I really, really love it. Um, but you know what else I really love about it? And what I think it makes it really stand out from other children's fish oil is what else is in it. There's lutein, there's five and a half milligrams of lutein in it. And lutein is a phytonutrient that you find in green foods. And we found out from our research that children are not eating green foods. But why lutein is so important is because it's very important for the eyes, very important for the brain. It's the most abundant carotenoid in the brain. Uh, and lutein protects the retina. That's a tissue at the back of your eye, um, just in front of the optic nerve. But lutein protects the retina, and why does that matter? Because blue light from computers, from phones, is actually very damaging to the eyes, uh, damaging particularly to the retina, and a lot of children are exposed to blue light. A lot of adults, I don't know about you guys, but I spend a lot of time in front of a computer because I do a lot of writing, and um, so I take this fish oil. I really like it, uh, and so it also has vitamin D added to it, um, the Health Canada dose of 600 IUs, so it's just easy, especially with kids, to give them their vitamin D, their lutein, and their omegas all in one pop. And just think, one thing I want to tell you, um, my hair is actually really dirty right now, by the way, so it's normally shinier when I've just washed it, but when I first started taking, uh, probably about a week to two weeks in, my hair got so much shinier, like unbelievable, I could not believe it. In fact, my husband was editing one of our videos uh, for a YouTube channel, and I said to him, like, what did you do? What is the lighting? Did you change the lighting on this video? Because my hair looks really great. He's like, no, Joy, that's just your hair. And that's when I realized, I was like, holy cow, people have been telling my hair looks shinier, and it's for sure um, from that fish oil, because there was like a significant change. But I, that's why I tell you my hair is a bit dirty, because normally it's shinier. I just have lots of dry shampoo in it right now. Um, so yeah, anyhow, fish oil is awesome. And then um, getting towards the end here, the other supplements I like, someone mentioned elderberry. I love elderberry. Whenever I feel like I'm getting a little bit sick, I pop an elderberry capsule. There are so many good elderberry supplements. I don't really have like a favorite one. Um, there's a good cough syrup I like. Uh, but there's good research uh, that the anthocyanins um, within elderberry uh, can shorten the duration of a cold and flu. Uh, also, what I do for my daughter is sometimes I'll just take the capsule and I'll just put half of it uh, into some water and she thinks she's getting juice. So we kind of both win. because She's like, yeah, this is the best. And then, you know, she's fully compliant with like taking the, the full amount. Oil of oregano. Does anyone like oil of oregano? I don't like Yeah, I don't like it either. It's disgusting. <laughs> but it works, right? Um, oil of oregano just like stays with you for days. I know I'm not really selling it here, but um, it, you know how I was saying uh, that garlic is like nature's antibiotic? Well, oil of oregano is too. Uh, you just have to be careful with it. You don't want to take it on the, in the long term uh, because it is so antimicrobial and taking that every day with your gut, you don't want to kill off the good bacteria too. So I don't recommend it kind of beyond like two weeks unless you're using it for another protocol, say if you have candida or something. But uh, oil of oregano, I find more effective than echinacea, but I also really like echinacea. The only downside, I feel like with oil of oregano and echinacea, you have to take it like the second you're sick, or I find it doesn't, it doesn't work as effectively. Okay, so the final thing I'm gonna talk about uh, is some lifestyle habits, um, as I promised when I first started talking about, because it's you know about a holistic approach and um, lots of sex. So <laughs> sex produces endorphins and feel-good hormones. And even if you don't have a partner, well, I don't need to explain to you. Let's just sleep it, keep it clean, everybody. Um, but alcohol, no, not alcohol. Look, I'm like, <laughs> alcohol and sex go together? No. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is that the hormones that get you in the mood also increase immune cells, like your natural killer cells. Um, and boost your body's ability to make protective antibodies. So these hormones are really, really good for us. Uh, so sleep is the next one. And this is an obvious one because I already talked about the fact that a lack of sleep lowers your immune system. So getting enough shut-eye, 
uh, is really key, and there's been some interesting research, for example, on twins that showed identical twins with different sleep patterns, showed that the twin with a shorter sleep duration had a depressed immune system. So sleeping is so key, especially for kids. That's when they grow. I don't know, for the, I remember when my daughter was like an infant, and she'd have like a really long nap, and I swear she grew in her sleep. Um, but sleep is so important for babies, no matter what age you are, um, because that's when we have the most growth and regeneration of our cells, of our skin, our skin cells, our muscle cells, our bone cells, do most of their regeneration actually when you're sleeping. Uh, so sleep is so important. Exercise, what I always like to say, but not too much, because too much exercise creating you know, chronic inflammation um, can really lower your immune system. And when I used to see clients one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I don't do that anymore, but when I used to, I always noticed my clients who were like marathon runners and triathletes and people, or even just I had clients who were doing CrossFit five days a week, they were getting so many colds and flus all the time. So my advice to them was, you know, stop, like, stop exercising so much. Do a little bit less, uh, and that will help your immune system kind of catch up and feel better. But um, you know, there's some interesting research that has shown that moderate intensity exercise has been shown to help to boost and support the immune system. So that's like 30 minutes, three to five times per week, figuring out what works for best for you. What what works best for you. And also I think it's important to adapt to your body's needs. You know, the exercise you did in your 20s and 30s is probably not the kind of exercise that works best for you now. And I've noticed that for myself personally, like in my 20s, I only felt that I had a good workout if I was like sweating and my face was beat red. And now like, I do not like doing those kind of exercises very often. Um, but uh, yeah, just like adapt to, like just really listen. How does your body feel best? What kind of exercise um, makes you feel best, makes you feel great? And then finally, making time for fun and play and joy, you know, laughing and spending time with people you adore, you admire, who inspire you. Just, you know, raises all sorts of good hormones and lowers cholesterol and lowers the inflammatory hormones, positive emotions are so good for us. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's, let's just all laugh now, shall we? Ha! <laughs> that was a very fake laugh, sorry. Um, okay, so lots of laughter. And so I know this is a lot of information, so rather than killing trees, because I always used to you know, give a handout, um, I have put my handout on a PDF that you can just download. Um, so you just have to go, you don't have to put in your email address or anything. I'm just posting this on my website. You just go to this link, you download it, you print it off, it's yours to keep. Uh, and basically I have summarized everything that I have talked about tonight. If you don't have a computer and you can't download it, I'll give it to Nature's Fair and maybe they can print off a few copies for some people who don't have access to that. Um, and uh, yeah. And of course, I am here to answer any questions that you might have. Does anyone have any questions? What's that? Oh, my books. Yes, I have books here too, some are. Just Joyce Detox we have here? Yeah. Awesome. So I have cookbooks, as I talked about in the beginning, and they're 15% off, right? Yep. So you're welcome to check them out, and I would love to sign your cookbook for you. I really enjoy doing that. And uh, any of the questions you have about any of the Genuine Health supplements, please feel free to ask me or the team as well. And uh, the Nature's Fair team is here. It, they'll, they'll be in the vitamin section as well. And they are like way more knowledgeable than me about all the supplements they have back there. So anything I talked about tonight, whether it be vitamin D or oil of oregano or even the fish oils, they are also super, super knowledgeable. Um, but before I take questions, one sec, I don't want to forget to say thank you to Nature's Fair for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Genuine Health for bringing me here from Toronto. Uh, I've worked with Genuine Health for several years now. I absolutely love them um, because they really take their time to do their research uh, when they're putting together very thoughtful, research-proven supplements. So I really believe in their brand and their product um, and really stand behind them. And I thank all of you as well for coming out this evening um, and you know 
giving yourself some self-care. It's all about self-care, right? So. Do you have a question? Question? Yeah. I, it's about the Omega-3 that you gave your daughter. Do they have the capsule form? They do not have the Omega-3 from Genuine Health in a capsule form, but I'm sure there's other brands. The only, the only challenge with a capsule form sometimes is you can't get that full amount because um, there's about 718 milligrams of DHA, um, no, sorry, EPA, and 450 of DHA, and sometimes it's harder to get in like a small little chewable, right? So, but it's, you can like mix it into stuff for your kids. And it tastes really good. Okay. Like I mentioned, I love it. Keep it in the fridge though once you open it. Yeah? About when, yes. Yeah, that's hard to say. That's a really good question. So she just asking lemons, like when they're really out of season, um, are they is there still are they still nutritionally viable? Um, not as much as when they are in season. So I think you are still going to get some vitamin C, uh, but if you're getting like a really hard lemon, it may not be because it, it may have been picked when it was very unripe. Um, so it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But citrus, when it's in season, like, you know, November, December, when clementines and tangerines are in season, they're also a really rich source of vitamin C as well. Pomegranate seeds, November is the season for them. Uh, and they are also really rich in vitamin C as well. question was about what protein powder do I give my daughter. So yeah, actually when my daughter was maybe about one-ish, uh, or maybe, no, even before then I started giving her smoothies, but I always make a smoothie for three people, for my husband and I and, and my daughter, and then I put a full scoop in there. So my daughter is never getting like a full scoop of protein. Like a full scoop would be too much. A full scoop I think is like 20 grams of protein, so that'd be too much for a kid. Um, but kids' protein needs are like, are actually pretty significant. Um, based on their weight. Like, kids need more protein than adults do based on their weight, but you wouldn't give them the amount that you would have, for example. So what I would suggest um, is to do what I do, just like a sprinkle. Or if you're making, I, I bake a lot, and I like to do, like, sweet potato protein muffins or, like, a banana bread, and that can be a way to get protein powder into your child as well. And then your next question was about the fish oil. Fish oil. Right. Oh, when I first started giving Vienna fish oil. Um, that was like pretty early on. I think she was like a baby. Now, we didn't have the genuine health one, um, but I started that earlier, early because DHA is so important for a healthy brain. Now, sometimes she got older, before we had the liquid, I would give her like chewables, and sometimes I don't know if she even had much of it. But breastfeeding, um, if you were breastfeeding, then that's how your baby is getting lots of DHA as well for brain health. That's like the, the main way. And then dry shampoo, I use my own. I make my own, I have my own Joyce Health dry shampoo. I sell it on my website. But I'm sure there's lots of good brands here too. Uh, but yeah, that's what I use, a little sprinkle. I always bring it, and you have to have dry shampoo when you have bangs, because <laughs> they get greasy very fast. No problem. Question over, was there a question over there? Anybody else? Yep. I never used uh, turmeric. What would you throw it in? Yeah. Yeah. So she's just saying she hasn't used turmeric before, and what would it be good for? Well, you could break off a, if you're buying. Okay, there's just two ways to buy it. You could buy the root. They sell it here. I don't know if it's at. The, you have guys have some, right? Because I know the other stores I saw it. You could break off. So use it similar to how you use ginger, right? You could shave it into a stir fry. You could pop it into a smoothie. Um, you could make my turmeric latte. So delicious. It does not, no, and it does not taste like curry. Turmeric is what makes curry yellow, not what gives curry the taste. So it's, it, from a culinary perspective, turmeric works for both sweet and savory. 
So it's nice to do both. Like I've made a turmeric cake before. Um, I've made turmeric cookies. I'm trying to think about. Does anyone else use turmeric for anything I haven't mentioned? Curries. Curries. Yeah, yeah, curries. Uh, but it's really yummy. You can buy, um, if you're new to it, which obviously you are, um, you can buy it as a ground organic spice. They will sell it here and use it as a powder instead, um, as you're just getting used to it. No, not always, no. Okay. no, not always, but a curry is a great way to use it, but if you're making a curry, turmeric isn't the only spice you would use. You'd use like cumin and coriander, pepper. It's good on eggs. Yes, eggs, that's so true. It's great on eggs. Actually, for the longest time, my daughter's favorite food was, food was curry scrambled eggs. So I'd use an organic uh, curry powder, and one of the main ingredients was turmeric, and I would sprinkle that on her scrambled eggs, and she loved it. She ate it for so long until one day she decided she hates eggs, and she's never gone back. I think maybe I overdid it. I cannot get her to eat eggs, but she'll have them in a day. It's good. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we can take a couple more questions. I just wanted to give everybody a chance to enter to win the prize basket for Genuine Health. If you haven't done that yet, raise your hand and Samantha will give you a ballot to enter. There we go. And while she's doing that, are there any other questions for Joy? No. Oh, here we go. <laughs> No, there's lots. That's a great question. Um, she, she's asking, do I need to eat the ginger? Can I steep it? Um, my favorite way to have ginger is I like slice it thinly and I put it in a hot mug of water and put a little bit of honey. So you're infusing it. So yeah, you're still getting lots of the phytonutrients, absolutely. And um, what I do is I'll just like sip on it all night. Uh, and it's so good. When Actually, whenever my tummy is like a little bit funny, because um, I'm actually really sensitive to onions and chia seeds, so random. Uh, but whenever my tummy is like gurgling at me, I always do ginger tea, and within probably 30 minutes, the inflammation is gone. Like the gurgling, because ginger is really so powerful. And really make sure that you buy organic ginger and organic turmeric. It makes a really big difference, just the taste. Um, it, and it's just a lot better for you, not sprayed with pesticides. Okay, so we're gonna do a draw now. Just one more minute. 